Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Wendy Mutata. This month we are celebrating women and I decided to uh, start a theme defining women. So hence we have Fasia Hassan today. So she's the former Vice Secretary General. She's the Peace Must Fall activist. And most importantly, she's one of the youngest MP. So MP means member of parliament of the ANC. Fasia, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, so I'm actually a member of the provincial legislature. Okay, yes, the member doing... of provincial yeah, legislature. Yeah, but I am the youngest one. Yes, so I've seen you yeah. yeah. How are you? I'm doing very well. How, how does it feel? You know, now I think the, uh -huh. the hype is starting to settle and the real work is starting, so mm -hmm. it is quite hectic. Um, I think the hours are quite long, but I'm, I'm enjoying it and mm -hmm. I'm finding it very interesting, you know, doing something different and getting really, you're like your hands dirty, yeah. your hands really involved in it. Because I saw you at The Rock just before they announced the assignment. Look him all tired, I'm like, that must have been the campaign. Yeah, I was exhausted. If you saw me at The Rock, like, I had my classes, <laughs> yeah, I was like, really yes, yeah. <laughs> um, And you know, it was a very contested election, mm -hmm. so none of us were really sure what the, uh, what the results were going to be like. So, yes. yeah, it was definitely like anxious. So how did you start your political career? So I guess, it started here at Vitz, mm -hmm. which is uh, yeah. where we are now. Yeah. Um, I started in around 2013 because mm -hmm. I'm doing my undergrad. Okay. I got very involved in uh, kind of the campaigns on campus, but particularly around the Palestinian um, solidarity yes. movement. Yes. Uh, and then I got involved in the MSA, which was mm -hmm. the Muslim Students Association. I became the first woman chairperson. Um, and that sort of got me into the PYA, mm -hmm. the Progressive Alliance, and eventually led us into SRC and now and now here. I mean obviously I'm condensing it to did fees must fall and all yes. of that, but really it started here at, at campus. Mm -hmm. But see I, I wanted to take a bit about the fees must fall. We, I understand that you're in the forefront of fees must fall and a lot has happened. Mm -hmm. Um and uh, did you experience any trauma during that and then how did you overcome it if you have? Mm -hmm. I think fees must fall, yeah. It was I think perhaps one of the most traumatic things any of us have gone through. Mm -hmm. Um, not just because of the pressures and all of that, but I mean, particularly 2016, it was a war zone, right? There were heavy militarization of campus, police were shooting at us every yes. day, tear gas, time grenades. Um, and I don't think it's something that we've overcome. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's, and I, and I know this because, for example, even this year, New Year's, or even if there's a loud mm -hmm. noise, mm -hmm. like a bang or whatever it is. Mm -hmm automatically like my body kind of freezes. Oh, so even now, it's because of the experience. Yeah. yeah, even now my body like kind of goes into shock mode or if if I see, uh, there's a lot of like pictures and like, documentaries that are coming out now. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that I blocked out that I actually didn't remember mm -hmm. happening. And now when I'm seeing the documentaries, I'm like, oh wait, that did happen. Oh. But in my mind, I like put it away. Mm -hmm. You know, so, so now that we're starting to reflect on it, mm -hmm. we're starting to see just the kinds of effects that it had on us. So, how do how your parents feel? I mean, they would see these things on TV, mm -hmm. a lot was happening and everywhere. Whenever you switch on your TV, the police must fall, first doing this, mm -hmm. Fasiya Hassan is out here giving comment, okay, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. Did they tell you, see, you need to stop, because mm -hmm. this is not good? Look, I have very supportive parents, but any parent who saw, I mean, we saw what happened, mm -hmm. um, and I think TV was just a snippet. Mm -hmm. I often had my parents coming to campus because they just, because you see, the truth is we were not going to leave, mm -hmm. despite the fact that I think our families want us to take a step back. It is. It wasn't an option for us. Mm -hmm. And I think when they realized that we were not going to go anywhere, that they might as well come here. And there were many times, I remember particularly by um, the... Uh, Christ Church, okay, yeah, the yeah. Trinity Church, mm -hmm. um, and around the, the theatre that yes, area. Yes, yes. I remember particularly because my dad called me and he said, um, "I'm coming to campus. Yeah, there's a mess. I'm coming." I was like, <laughs> "Okay, don't come, please, don't come." But then he okay. um, and it was just a process of running from tear gas, mm -hmm. stun grenades, rubber bullets, and what was I think very important was that my parents were actually efforts. They studied it. Yeah. And they were very involved in the anti apartheid mm -hmm. movement. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was this moment of this kind of generational, I wouldn't say handover, uh -huh. but this generational moment where I think they themselves underwent similar stuff during mm -hmm. the 1980s. Mm -hmm. And here we were in 2016, mm -hmm. also running from tear gas in the same space, but mm -hmm. he was an adult, my dad was an adult, yeah. and then his daughter was there. So, so, so I think for them there was this moment of, what's going on? Like, yeah. 
surely well, we've overcome these mm-hmm. issues, but here, but here we are. are. Yeah. So I think that was an interesting, like a tables had turned <laughs> kind of thing mm-hmm. um, um, for them to come to terms with. But yeah, it was it, it put a lot of pressure. I mean, if I'm being honest, a yes, lot of pressure yes. on or intention mm-hmm. um, on relationships and friendships and family. Yes. Um, and there was just some people who I unfortunately couldn't see why we did mm-hmm. what we what we had what we felt like we had to do. So, yeah. But uh, uh, still on Christmas fall, do you think there's anything that you could have done differently now as the you mm-hmm. of that era? On the overall, I think we did the right thing mm-hmm. in starting Christmas fall. When we look back though, I think there were many moments where we should have gone into negotiations earlier, mm-hmm. particularly in 2016. Yeah. I think if people remember, people were forced back into class, essentially through the barrel of the gun. So I think there were many moments where we could have tried to avoid such a severe kind of clashes with the police. Mm-hmm. Now I say that now because it's a few years later. Yeah. I think we did what we could do with the information in front of us mm-hmm. and with what was in front of us at the time. You know, hindsight is a perfect science because I know how it would have ended up, right? At the time, we didn't. Um, so I know why we did what we did, yeah. but now that I look back, there are moments where I feel like perhaps we should have gone in this direction. Yes. Or, you yes. know, and it's life. We always do that with yes. whatever it is in your life. You always look back and say, well, maybe I should have done this. Yes, thing. that's true. And then how did you manage to balance your school work and all the meetings? I mean, you were the secretary general yeah. at that time. When I was at Principal Buzel, immediately when we wanted a comment, okay, Fasia is available. Fasia, we want a comment, can we meet up? Yeah. Stuff like that, yeah. Sure, yeah. I think, you know, when we talk about the sacrifices mm-hmm. and things that had to suffer, mm. my academics was a big one. Mm. Um, I was lucky though that by the time I became, because remember I became SGA, it was my second time at the SRC. Yes. First time as academic officer, so I did a full load. Mm-hmm. I was doing my NLB at the time. So by the time I became SG, I actually spoke to the university and I said, I can't do a full uh, slot, I can't do five subjects, I'll never manage with the kind of yes. you know, requirements of me as an mm-hmm. SG. Little did we know we'd do fees must fall again. But I was only doing two or three subjects, and if I'm being honest, I didn't attend class. Mm-hmm. Um, it just wasn't possible. And studying the content of the work two days or a night before the exam, mm-hmm. being the first time you come into mm-hmm. content mm-hmm. with like coming yeah. to contact with actual work, it's yeah. overwhelming, it's yeah. a lot. Then yeah. you write an exam for eight mm-hmm. hours later. Uh, I think, you know, I, I actually, it was God, eh? Yeah. Like, I'm being honest, I really think that there was some divine intervention mm-hmm. because I didn't dedicate almost any time. I mean, I would have liked to given more time to it, but mm-hmm. it just wasn't possible. Okay. Now coming to your new role as an MP, what does your typical day look like on your day to day? What do you do? Okay, so it's a bit different every day. Mm-hmm. So Monday is constituency day. Mm-hmm. So those are the days you specifically, so you get assigned a constituency mm-hmm. and you go and you do work in that community. So that's Monday. Tuesday, Thursday and Friday mm-hmm. are days in the legislature. So that's where we do, so there's three things we do, right? Do you guys have like a little orientation like how we do when we get some yeah, yeah, jobs? Yeah, 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 we have an orientation. Okay. Like two weeks. So, so the three, a lot of people, even before I get to my schedule, mm-hmm. a lot of people will say to us, well, what do you guys actually do? Yes. Like what does an MPL or an MP do? Mm-hmm. So there's three things that we do. Number one is lawmaking, right? Yeah. We create laws mm-hmm. when necessary. Number two is uh, oversight. Mm-hmm. So we do oversight of government work. So we're not government, but we oversee the work of government. It's our oh. job to make sure they do their yes, jobs. Yes, yes. And I'll speak to that in a minute. Mm-hmm. And then the third thing we do is public participation, mm-hmm. which is this getting the public involved and being that link between the public and government. Okay. So on Tuesday, Thursdays and Fridays, mm-hmm. we have portfolio committee meetings. Mm-hmm. So for every department, there's a portfolio committee in Parliament. Which department is agent. Agent. So I'm sitting in three committees, which is quite a heavy load. Wow, for see again. Yeah, yeah, most people have like <laughs> one or two, and I happen to be in three, but I was assigned this. So mm-hmm. the first committee I sit in is education. Mm-hmm. I sit in economic development, mm-hmm. but it includes rural and agriculture okay. development, as well as environmental mm-hmm. affairs. Um, and then I, the third one I sit in, because you know I'm in yes. it's oversight of the premier. Okay. So Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, we have committee meetings mm-hmm. where it's extensive. To be honest, we do a lot of reading, mm-hmm. but then we also do a lot of site visits. So okay. say, for example, in economic development, mm-hmm. they say to us, uh, we have this project around the automotive industry, and we have so many young people we employ, we'll go to the site and okay. see yeah. what's going on. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, it's one thing to read it in a document. 
it's another thing to see what's happening and to identify the problems. Yeah. So that's one th the other thing that we do. And then Wednesday um, is caucus day. Okay. So everybody obviously you have to belong to a political party, and then you do the work of not necessarily ANC work, ANC work, mm -hmm. but we do ANC caucus work. Okay. So I'm the work of political education mm -hmm. in the caucus expo. So we do a lot of political education work. Um, and then we still work on weekends, like I don't want anyone to think, no. yeah, most weekends we're working um, very long hours, often you have oversight in the daytime, like you yeah. visit the sites, yes. the meeting will start at 5, end at 11pm, yeah. and then at 11pm the meeting finishes. And tomorrow you still have another day? Yeah, so it's a lot, it's something, it's not like it's your full time job, mm -hmm. it's a full, full time thing. Yeah, it's not like a Monday to Friday, the normal No, no, day. it's Sunday it's to days. Sunday. Like, I can get a call now and they can say there's a crisis in this community. You um, have to go yeah, and check it out. Because we're mm -hmm. public representatives yeah. now. You have, you're not, uh, you know what they said to you when they called upon you to be available? You mm -hmm. said you were available. You said you will be, yes. So we're available mm -hmm. now. Yeah. And then also, have they ever, like coming to now, because you are a public servant now, whatever that you do, we, we want to see. Mm. So in terms of your social media, do they ever tell you that, okay, now you are a public servant, there is a way that you need to communicate with the public? They haven't said that to mm -hmm. us, um, but I do use my social media quite extensively, mm -hmm. where I can, mm -hmm. is, um, to, to show what people what we're doing. Mm -hmm. But like I said, half the time we're just sitting in meetings. Um, and then, then I usually try to show the oversight work, but I think it will be interesting to see if they develop a policy around it. Because yeah. we see There's politicians a lot of it. Yes, yes, yes. So fighting each other on Twitter. And I mean, I don't think I think they're still developing a social media mm -hmm. policy. Mm -hmm. So right now they haven't said anything, but I do use my social media. Yes. I mean, you have also. yes. I mean, you you have been in politics for quite some mm -hmm. time now, since from that being mm -hmm. an SG and then until now. Yeah. Mm. So. Who's the woman where you can say this woman has literally shaped my political career? Mm. There are many. Mm -hmm. Sure. If I think... Look, the first person I have to talk about is my mother. Okay. Um, she's a feminist. She raised me as a feminist. Mm -hmm. And also taught me to, to also be unapologetic in, in the work of my career. Whether it was politics or law, because mm -hmm. yeah. I studied law. Um, I have to have to have to first acknowledge her because I wouldn't have gone to where I am now mm -hmm. had she not equipped me and given me the confidence. Um, but I also have lots of women mm -hmm. <laughs> role models. Mm -hmm. um, so in the political space, if I'm being honest, I take a lot of strength from Yulo, mm -hmm. from Dulo, we, we, we started in the trenches together, yeah. we there, even though we're the same age. Mm -hmm. um, I do take a lot, of, a lot of strength there and from other colleagues. Mm -hmm. um, and, and also, I mean, women actually in the movement. Uh, I have, or I look up to, firstly, the DSG of the ANC. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that uh, Jess Stuart is actually... You actually with her on, uh, what's this, um, in Pretoria, where they were announcing at The Rock. Yes, yes, yes. Was yes. There, yeah. yes. Um, and she's actually, you know, she was very involved with the Mandela era as well. Mm -hmm. She was the PA to, to Madiba, and they come from a different generation. Mm -hmm. And you can see it, I mean, they're at work at 6.30 in the morning. They arrive first and leave last. And these are not things people yeah. know um, about politicians because there's always this propaganda and there's always mm -hmm. this in the front. But she's one of the hardest working mm -hmm. people mm -hmm. and women that I know. And I take, I take so long. Exactly. Yeah. But also about this idea that, you know, in any space, not just politics, mm -hmm. as a woman, and you'll know this and your viewers will know this, I think that we held to a much difficult, much more difficult standard as women. True, yes. You know, if we make a mistake, it's an even bigger issue. Mm -hmm. um, I always feel like the playing ground for us is more difficult. And I've learned from her that we can never ever back down. Mm -hmm. That each step we take, we are paving the way for women who come after us. And there was something that someone said to me, I was at panel, I can't quite recall which, mm -hmm. but they said to me, if you are the only woman at the table, then actually you've made a mistake because you cannot be the only woman in that space. It's your job to bring other women into oh. that space. And and since someone and since that interaction, I always try to bring other young women mm -hmm. with me wherever I can, whatever mm -hmm. program it is, whatever event it is, whatever opportunity it yeah. is, I try and bring other women with me or even to other young people. Mm -hmm. um, because we're only as strong as the people who come after us, mm -hmm. you know, and I've learned this 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 knowledge and this idea I've learned from the upper leadership, and I'm not talking 
but I'm lost years. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, so to people, I've learned that more from the from the more veteran group. Mm-hmm. Uh, that it's not even about me; it's about us and it's about the collective. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think? What do you think are some of the similarities between us and our generation mm-hmm. and the women specifically, mm-hmm. and the nineteen fifty six women? Determination. Mm-hmm. I think that as women, especially now, we're fighting harder. Well, maybe not harder, but I think I think we're fighting harder. Yes. And I think it's different also because of the advent of social media. So we always had the objectification of women, always. But now it's so much more in your face. Yes. Now it's as you pick up your mm-hmm. phone. Um, and also, I'll give you an example, right? Mm-hmm. We'll dress up to go to legislature, parliament. Yes. Oh, she looks so old. She's wearing old people clothes. Yeah. Oh, she, look at how she's dressed. It's uh-huh. inappropriate. No one says that about a man. Mm-hmm. No one will ever ask a man why he's wearing what he is. Never. But women, mm-hmm. it's not about what we say, mm-hmm. about how hard we work. Mm-hmm. Even in positions, when people mm-hmm. get into positions, mm-hmm. the first thing that somebody will say is, oh, she must have slept around to get, to get that position. You know, and it makes me so angry mm-hmm. because thousands, m- millions of women work so hard on a daily basis just to have a seat at the table. That's true. Only for somebody to say, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you're not wearing enough makeup. Oh, well, this happened to me recently. A few days ago, yeah. you know, I don't wear makeup every day, yeah. I am now, but mm-hmm. most of the days, yeah, it's just I'm tired mm-hmm. or whatever, my work comes first, right? Yeah. I'll come to work with no makeup. Someone said, oh, so you're not wearing makeup. I was like, who cares? <laughs> like, does, does it affect my ability to no, work? No, it doesn't. Does it affect my ability to be a mm-hmm. public representative? And no one says that mm-hmm. to me, you know? So I always feel like there's extra rules and extra things put on. Even, even if you go out, mm-hmm. you know, people don't view you as a leader. You mm-hmm. just... And, and, Especially when you go into a, a social space, yeah. very often people will think I'm a plus one. This has happened countless oh, times. Oh, so, okay. so I'm not a mm-hmm. no, no, leader. I must no, be no. somebody's girlfriend yes, or somebody's yes, partner. Yes. And that shocks me because I'm like, we've worked so hard mm-hmm. only for people. And often it's women, by the way, who are yeah, saying it's that. Women, yes. So they'll say to me, so, so who are you with? And yeah. Like, no, no, I'm here. The, me, I was invited. I'm the, inv- I'm the invited, yes, invited yes. Team, you know. Um, so I think also as women, mm-hmm. we also need to ensure that we don't perpetuate problematic. Yeah, because that's what I was about ideas. to ask you. So what do we do now as women? Yeah. So look, I think the first thing is we have to watch that we don't perpetuate these ideas. Mm-hmm. So even how we speak about, even if you don't like a girl, yeah, there's no need to talk about her in a particular way mm-hmm. or oh, she must have slept mm-hmm. around or mm-hmm. you know. I think we need to stop ourselves from doing that. I also think we need to stop allowing ourselves as women to be used by men mm-hmm. to close the doors for other women. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if you've experienced this or anyone else has, mm-hmm. but often they'll say to us, but that woman is okay with it. Why are you making a big deal? Mm-hmm. Why are you making a big deal about the mm-hmm. fact that you're not paid as much or whatever the case is? And we need to make sure that as women, we're never found in that position, mm-hmm. that we have each other's backs. And it's not necessarily about being kumbaya. We don't have to like each other, we but, we have to, yes. but we have to understand that mm-hmm. there's a bigger long-term mm-hmm. goal and in order for us to get to that long-term goal we're much stronger together than we are divided and like i said earlier about taking other young women yes. and women with you mm-hmm. you can't be the only person who's successful mm-hmm. you must ensure that this entire generation mm-hmm. after you and that's how i consider my success about the generations who come after us mm-hmm. are they supported mm-hmm. are they like for example now that you know an idea we know nothing as we walked in yes. we knew nothing about what was mm-hmm. going on and i don't want the next generation of youth representatives to feel the way we have, mm-hmm. that we just put on in the deep end. So that's why I'm bringing more people. Because you are the first group. This has yes. never happened before. We are essentially the youngest and the first group yes. to, to come through, and also the first group to have been born post-democracy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I never want another young person to feel as lost or as confused mm-hmm. as I have over the last mm-hmm. few months. And I, and I think as I will mm-hmm. in the future, so that they support. I understand that you and you know, I'll just give reference to her because I, mm. you guys, you are from France and then it's kind of like, you know, when you know someone, yeah. so yeah. it's kind of like, oh, okay. So you know our difficulties, our struggles as young mm. people. And then when you go to parliament, mm. you basically, you know, our, you know, our, you know, our struggles mm. in each and every day and you understand our language. So what is one thing that we can expect from you guys? Okay. So I'll speak for myself. Yes. Um, one of the things I've been pushing, and I also just delivered my maiden speech mm-hmm. a few days ago, uh, which I'll also release on my social media. One of the big things I said mm-hmm. to the entire city mm-hmm. was that every policy, every 
decision that's made both by the legislature and government, we need to ask the question of what is its impact on young people, mm -hmm. what is its impact on women, what is its impact on the LGBTQIA plus community, and what is its impact on this entire group as a whole. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it in a very specific, deliberate way, you then begin to see and develop policy that's beneficial mm -hmm. to young people. Yeah. So one of the big things I'm looking at, and it's going to be a very difficult thing over the next five years, mm -hmm. but it's about youth and employment. Mm -hmm. You know, we fought so hard around access to education. People are, I mean, still problematic, mm -hmm. but you know, the, yeah. the wheels are rolling there. Right? Mm -hmm. People are starting to open up, and that's for the younger generation now to foresee and make sure it happens. Now the next thing is, how do we ensure that those people we're educating can get a job? Mm -hmm. Um, and that's something that I keep reminding every sitting, I just, what are we doing yes. for young people? How many young people are benefiting from this opportunity? Mm -hmm. How many young people are employed? Mm -hmm. You know, I keep reminding yes. them because we're not on the periphery. Mm -hmm. We are the majority of the country. That's the truth. Something like 60%, mm -hmm. I think it's 57%, but let's say 60. 60% mm -hmm. of the country is youth yes. under the age of 35. Mm -hmm. And they're not just young, they're young, black and female. And educated. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And, and we want to create an entire generation where it's not an anxiety to get a job. Yeah. I mean, I've experienced it, you've experienced it, we've all experienced mm. the anxiety of, of not knowing that even if you've performed well, not knowing whether you're going to get a job. And mm. that's not something that I, I want to continue, even if it takes me my whole life. Yeah. That's something I would really like to change. Mm -hmm. But see, for the light one, I know you have recently won the Student Peace Prize. Please tell us about that. What is it? Yeah, so the Student Peace Prize uh, is basically. It comes from Norway, okay. um, and it is sort of linked, but um, basically they acknowledge students or student organizations okay. who've done really good work in advancing the, mm -hmm. the role of students, mm -hmm. or the plight of students. Uh, and they acknowledged fees must fall, mm -hmm. but not just fees must fall, about the role in the work we did in ensuring policy interventions from mm -hmm. government. Mm -hmm. So that was also my role as SAUS, which is the South African Union of Students. It's essentially the national SRC body of which I'm the deputy president. Okay. And what they were really acknowledging is working with government, ensuring that the social movement doesn't just become something that we wrote in the history books, but mm -hmm. something that's changing the lives of our people. So it wasn't just about me, it was definitely about the movement mm -hmm. and definitely about the millions of young people who mm -hmm. I hope in the next few years, I mean, we've started, it's not um, done, mm -hmm. there's lots of growing yeah. pains. But as of 2018, that first group of people, first year, started to benefit from mm -hmm. education. And that was because of the intervention of his history. Mm -hmm. And that was really what it was about. Anything that you want to add? Oh, please uh, follow me on social media. Please do, guys. Uh, Facebook is Fasia Hassan. Uh, Twitter, I've recently changed my Twitter handle. Mm -hmm. It's at Fasia Hassan, capital F, capital H. Okay. Uh, and Instagram, Fasia underscore Hassan. Okay. But thanks, guys, for tuning in.